Hello, I'm Philip Stokes and I'm here at Productronica in Munich and I'm joined by Michael Ford from Mentor Graphics. Michael, great to see you again. Thanks for stopping yep. by. Mm -hmm. You launched some new products last week and mm -hmm. this morning I've been talking to lots of people here about Industry 4.0, 4.0, 4 whatever you prefer to call it. Yes. It seems to be a, a real buzz about that here in Germany. Are you seeing that and does that fit with, um, with, with what, your, what your product story is? Uh, yeah, remarkably actually. Um, you know, we've uh, heard about the 4.0, it's very exciting that people want to create something that's almost like a 3D printer approach mm. to mass production. Mm. And, you know, you've got to think that at the moment we're worlds apart from that. You know, you think about a 3D printer making a one-off device in a matter of hours, and then you look at mass production. How are these two things supposed to meet? Mm. And one thing that we've been trying now for quite a long time is to bring tools to manufacturing that bring agility. Right. Bring the ability to change following a customer demand change. Now, for example, in the markets, we may go and buy a different mobile phone. Instead of there being a vast distribution chain associated with that product, now we're shipping direct. Yeah. So we're seeing that the factory is seeing this kind of short-term variation yeah. in the demand for the product. So how is the factory supposed to cope and make these changes in short term, mm. but stay at a high productivity? Yeah, and a low cost. and. Exactly. I mean, they need to behave as if they're mass production, yeah. even though they're not. Yeah. So what we've been doing is to have a look at what our customers face as being, what are the challenges, what are the barriers to be able to do this? And one of the key things was materials. Mm -hmm. And they said, look, you know, we've got machines on the shop floor. They sometimes ran out of materials unexpectedly. So, you know, the kind of quick reaction was to say, OK, bring more materials out, prepare more and more and more. But this is actually strangling us now. Right. Because we're not able to change. Every time we need to change, we have to move all of these materials and rebook them back into the warehouse. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah. So they said, go and talk to our supply chain guys because right. ERP tools, we've spent a lot of money on them. They work very well to a point. Mm -hmm. And that point in manufacturing for electronics is quite a far distance from the actual shop floor. Yeah. So we worked it out that what we need to do is to provide a kind of missing link. So this is what our two new products are about. It's being able to provide this link between the shop floor and the supply chain. Okay. So imagine, for example, the customer comes to you, and this is you know, like Industry 4.0, this is my schedule of what I would like you to build today. Mm. So planning and ERP need to make a decision. Can I make this product instead of that product that I was going to make? Yeah. How to make that choice? It's depending on the accurate understanding of what physical materials I've got available, being able to introduce the product so quickly onto that line and supply the materials immediately. Yeah. So the knowledge has to be based on an accurate understanding of each material. Yeah. These can be in the warehouse. These can be a managed shop floor point of view stores. Mm -hmm. They could be just lying around the shop floor having been yeah. taken off the machines. Unless you can pinpoint every single one of them, you don't have a decision. Yeah. Yeah. And so what we are bringing is this complete control for all materials all over the factory, all over the warehouse, throughout all of the different hierarchies, electrical, mechanical parts, even out to distributors, mm. so that you have that complete control. Plus, the second product we have is the Valor Information Highway. Right. So this brings the information from the machines to say, okay, I had a work order of 5,000 units, mm. I've made 2,642, yeah. These are the materials that you assigned me that are still available, and these are the ones that are actually on a circuit board. Right. Because the ERP couldn't know that. It didn't right. have that information. So again, when it's starting to change to plan and re-optimize, yeah. unless it knew this information, it didn't stand a chance. Yeah. So now we can bring that information into ERP yeah. as an enhancement of the ERP function, and we can start to react very much more quickly. Okay, I can see from a, a customer standpoint that mass customization, which we're <laughs> hearing more and more about, some really good examples of the first smartphones being made in the US at the moment, mm -hmm. and they liken that to instead of having an order for 100,000 smartphones, they've mm -hmm. got 100,000 orders for one smartphone. Right. <laughs> so it changes the whole dynamic for them. They're still making the same thing, but they're allowing that to be unique and they're fulfilling within a number of days, sometimes within a number of hours. So there's, yes. there's different challenges there. But from the other side, from the equipment and the technology that is is enabling that mm. what what technologies are there that, that make that easier is rfid one of the areas that's 
adding adding to that process? Yeah, potentially it can be. I mean, from what we saw of Industry 4.0, you've got a, an RFID tag that attaches to, I think the example this morning we heard in the, the speech here, was about mixing muesli. You know, you right. have all the different ingredients. And it's a great concept. You attach a unique device ID to something, you define on it what this product is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And you, in theory, can make a one-off product in a mass customization way. And I think for a lot of the simple industrial processes, we already have the technology to do that. It's a matter of putting it all together. If you, however, think about a complex process like electronics, now, in the manufacturing, we know that we have to retain the efficiency of the machines. So when you change from product one to another, you don't want to be changing materials. Yeah. So you have common materials. But how many feeders do you need for all of the common materials for all of the variants that you want? Yeah. And so this is another example of a tool that possibly is special for electronics rather than the others mm -hmm. that will implement 4.0. What you need to do is to take, I have these family setups, these materials, and here is my demand for the customer mm. today, yeah. defined by my RFID tags. How can I optimize these two things together yeah. to create a process similar to the muesli machine? Yeah. So I've got all the bits of muesli set up, the sultanas, the oats, and all of this kind of stuff, and I can simply then put all of my boards with the tags through and yeah. make that product. Yeah. So there's an extra little piece that I think is necessary yeah. for electronics. Okay. And that is the intelligence to provide this kind of optimization for the yeah. actual plan, and that relates to the materials and moving it yeah. all the way. So yeah. it's all part of the same solution. And when we talk about that intelligence, the intelligence, if you like, for me is the overarching issue with 4.0. It has mm. to be there, yes. but it has to be, I guess, an, an open architecture. It has to be an architecture that everybody can deliver data in and everybody can take data from. Yes. Is, that, is that correct? It is, and you know, that's one of the things that's been uh, a real challenge in the industry. You know, all of the different machine vendors here, they all have their different ways of communicating. Mm. And it's not just how they communicate, it's what they communicate and how they interpret different things mm. to be. And you know, one of the strengths of any shop floor system is the ability to interpret that information and establish this bi-directional communication mm. and make sense of the data that's coming out. This is something that we've been working with for a long, long time. Yeah. And it is crucial, I think, to Industry 4.0 to make a solution based on this, a, at least an ability to understand everybody, yeah. if not a common mechanism to, to communicate flow the with data. Everybody. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it goes beyond manufacturing, so it goes beyond, and. I, I guess one of the ways that 4.0 really adds value is it adds value in the supply chain, in the delivery of goods to manufacturing, but mm. also post-manufacturing, traceability, oh, visibility, absolutely. maybe even some aftermarket services that can connect into it. And it's only if mm. you encompass the whole thing, I guess, that mm. it really makes sense. Well, this is it. I mean, a, a real integrated platform for the creation of a product. Mm. I mean, it starts from the design. This is the intent of what the product is that's to be made. That then needs to be qualified to make sure it's available, you know, ready for production. When we set up all the processes, we need to then map the key elements that each process will do to that board. That then needs to be assigned to a production job, which today is a work order, tomorrow yeah. may be an RFID chip. Yeah. And then that needs to be executed all the way through surface mount, hand mount, the uh, test processes, yeah. the final assembly and the build, quality and inspection, until it leaves the door. Yeah. You then leave the door with a product that has an external serial number. You read that serial number and you can understand you know, the everything. complete lifetime, yeah. the complete build record of that. Should that product fail in the market, which hopefully it doesn't, yeah. but should it, you can read that same serial number yeah. and get access to exactly all of the test information, all of the build information and everything. And Not only to do the repair, yeah. Yeah but how to learn to do it well, next time. Well, that's what I was going to say. Is it a design-related problem? Is yeah. it material-related? Related, or is it you know, manufacturing-related? Yeah. Until you know which one it is, yeah. you can't go and find the problem and fix it. Okay, so it's a storm, a perfect storm of all these different things coming together. The mass customization, the 4.0, big data, hmm. all those you know, smart supply chains, all those different issues are, are, are building hmm. up to yes. hopefully create a solution that suits your <laughs> your current offering. The perfect storm is actually a good way of putting it because you know uh, I think one of the nice things about industry 4.0 is that it's built on principles that are well established today. Mm. It's simply putting mm. the pieces together 
in a slightly different way with a little bit of intelligence yeah. that wraps this whole thing up. And that's what's going to make it work. Yeah. And it works well because it's going to reduce the cost for the manufacturers, yeah. reduce the cost for us as consumers as well. Yeah, yeah So absolutely. it's a and great story. And it's the a, consumers gaining more and more power in this decision-making process because they're becoming the customer that we fulfill to rather than the big OEM. So exactly. Good. Michael, thanks very much for chatting to me. There's going to be a lot more conversations on this topic and I'm sure we'll have some of them. Thanks for your time. Look forward to it. Thank you very much. Thank you.